I have a real fear of death. I never used to. When I was younger, when I was in my twenties, I wasn't afraid of dying. I didn't really think about dying. But I turned 30 at the very beginning of the COVID epidemic. And since then, I've been very, very afraid of disease and death. It has, at times, crippled my mental state. And I've been on and off anxiety medication to try and cope with it and curtail it. It's exhausting, and it feels like a complete waste of time in some ways to develop illness anxiety and a really paralyzing fear of death. What's ironic about this is that I love death. <laughs> when it comes to stories and art, I'm a big fan of death, disease, war, body horror. I listen to death metal and black metal. I read a lot of horror novels, especially body horror, really gross stuff. I love bloody gory horror films. And I love the gothic. All these things are obsessed with death. Death is very prominent in all the stuff I just listed. Lyrics about death, scenes of death. My favorite novel, Frankenstein, is about digging up bodies and bringing a dead thing to life. I'm obsessed with it, and I love it in my fiction. When it comes to real life, I'm absolutely crippled by a fear of getting sick and dying. The idea of dying very suddenly, getting hit by a truck or falling off a cliff, that doesn't really frighten me. It's dying slowly that freaks me out. And I'm a healthy person as well, touch wood. So when my friend Adam recommended me Smoke Gets In Your Eyes by Caitlin Doughty, I was pretty captivated. I was immediately curious about the effect that this book might have on me and whether or not it might be useful in trying to cure my fear of death, or at least get it under control. Then, when I interviewed my friend, the author Heather Parry, who wrote Orpheus Builds a Girl for this channel, she mentioned this book as well, and what a great influence it was on her, because it's really gothic in a lot of ways, despite being a non-fiction. Caitlin Doughty is a mortician. She runs a YouTube channel that is currently about to hit 2 million subs, which is called Ask a Mortician. And she's written, I think, three books at this point. This was her first, and it's my first book of hers. It's a kind of biography that tracks her career through her 20s, working as a mortician. She begins her career at West Wind Cremation and Burial in San Francisco. She was originally born in Hawaii. She got a degree, I think a master's, in medieval history from the University of Chicago. And now she lives in LA where she runs an alternative funeral home called Undertaking LA. Caitlin Doughty is a really interesting person and Smoke Gets In Your Eyes is a book that explores the harsh and often uncomfortable truths of death itself. Obviously, because it's from a mortician's perspective, the main thing is the gritty truth of what happens to us after the moment we die. What happens to our bodies. What the people who grieve us go through. Both in terms of their emotional journey, but also the legal and physical process of sorting out a funeral and chatting with a mortician and what the mortician does to you. Doughty is astutely aware of the fact that this is from an American perspective. And for that reason, she talks a lot about death rituals and funeral traditions across different nations and histories and it's all really, really fascinating. She talks about a few differences in the law when it comes to US and UK behavior. For example, I know an American who lives in the UK who was shocked that open caskets aren't normal at UK funerals. In the US, it's pretty normal to have an embalmed corpse and an open casket. In the UK, no. I, to this day, have never seen a dead body, except like bones and skulls in museums. She talks a lot about colonialism, and how angry she is at what American and European colonialism has done to the global attitude towards death. The idea of hiding and being ashamed of death itself, of bodies. She talks about the industry of anti-aging creams. She talks about the clinical behavior, the whitewashing of death. She talks about how in medieval Europe, the bodies of saints were buried or even left on show in churches and cathedrals, and it was an honor for you to be buried near one. They embraced decomposition. They embraced rot. They embraced death itself. She talks about how there was a tribe in Brazil, which was sort of assimilated into Brazilian society when colonizers gave them a bunch of European diseases like smallpox and then offered them medicine that would help them, but only if they stopped cannibalizing. 
cannibalizing was part of their culture. And that was a particularly fascinating chapter. She also talks about different funeral rites in places like Japan, and throughout different histories around Europe as well, because medieval Europe was her specialty at university. It's amazing just how much she covers here. And it's also very, very funny. You'll feel very informed by different funeral rites and death traditions, but she also talks a lot, especially in the first half, and very, very brutally about bodies, decomposition, the legal habits, and the day-to-day -day life and responsibilities of morticians and crematorium workers. She tells funny stories of fat bodies that start leaking, and the state that some bodies turn up in. She talks about what disease does to us, the way that our bodies are ravaged by certain things. And it can be really, really uncomfortable a lot of the time, but it's also really liberating and freeing and kind of soothing. I should say there are no images in this book, but you are encouraged through the words of the book to look death in the eye. Now, as I said at the beginning of this video, I'm afraid of disease and death. It began with COVID. I became obsessed with the idea that COVID would kill me, that if I got it, I would die. I've had COVID at least twice, but only since being vaccinated against it. When the pandemic first hit, I thought, yeah, this is gonna take me. <laughs> and then it didn't. And then I thought, well, something else will. And the thing that I became obsessed with was cancer. I find that word hard to say to this day. Over the last two years, I've developed a crippling fear of developing cancer. And we're all surrounded by cancer. I think most of us know someone who's died of it, or has had it and survived it, and it really frightens me. Cancer comes up a lot in this book, because a lot of people die of cancer. But I found being forced to face it really liberating and comforting. I was grateful to Doughty. I also want to just quickly read out something that happens in the epilogue at the very end, but without context, this is not going to spoil anything, I promise. In 1961, a paper in the Journal of Abnormal and Social Psychology laid out the seven reasons humans fear dying. One, my death would cause grief to my relatives and friends. Two, all my plans and projects would come to an end. Three, the process of dying might be painful. Four, I could no longer have any experiences. Five, I would no longer be able to care for my dependents. Six, I'm afraid of what might happen to me if there is life after death. Seven, I'm afraid of what might happen to my body after death. Five, six, and seven don't bother me, but the others do. Especially the idea of not being able to finish my plans or not being able to experience new things. That's what really freaks me out. The idea that I could be given six months to live and then think about all the stuff I wouldn't be able to accomplish in that six months, that freaks me out. But in just the last few pages after that bit, Doughty provided me some comfort, which you can enjoy if you read the book. Facing death in this book has been extremely comforting to me. Something that I've always tried to remember is that we're all just stuff. This is something I think about constantly. We're all just chemicals. We're all just goo. The body is 70% water. We're made of just things. We're made of the same stuff that everything else is made of. When we're born, we're made of stuff. When we die, that stuff goes off into the world. I've always found that quite comforting. But seeing that stuff through Doughty's eyes is almost intoxicating. The way that she brings humor to it the idea that we are just meat, that shifts and changes and ages and rots, just like flowers do, just like our food does. It's really comforting and humbling. Maybe that's the word that I should be using, it's humbling. Makes you feel like you're really just a part of nature. You are just a thing that changes throughout your life and eventually dies and rots away, just like a flower, just like a cow, just like a dog, just like anything else that's alive. It's humbling, makes you feel grounded, makes you feel grateful for life itself. And as someone who, as I said, really likes death when it comes to fiction and music, I'm very gothic and I'm a metalhead, and I love learning about death rituals and cults and suicides and murders and really, really gross, gnarly stuff. I enjoy all of the really, really icky stuff that's in this, all of the blood all of the burning. It's nasty and gnarly, but it's also just real. It's life. Death is part of life in so many different ways. Death is a part of life because it's where life leads to, but death is also part of life because we experience other deaths. 
We experience the deaths of our families, our friends, our pets, celebrities. Death is a part of life in more ways than one. Doughty just helps to remind us of that fact, and I'm very, very grateful to her for it. I certainly found this book a comfort. As someone who has a lot of anxiety surrounding illness and death, this helped me a lot. It has helped me come to terms with my mortality and that of the people around me. And it's helped me appreciate life and appreciate death. She wants to deshroud death, remove all of the clinical cleanness of it. She wants to remind us that death is something to be loved and respected and celebrated. Death gives us a chance to celebrate life. I respect all of that so much. With Doughty's help, I've been able to understand death better and look at it, understand it, embrace it. And I'm gonna read more of her books and watch her YouTube channel. I think that she has a lot to teach us. Really, really valuable messages about death. And I'm very, very grateful. I'm still afraid, but this has helped a lot. An awful lot. Thank you, Caitlin Doughty. So if you struggle with disease, death, check this book out. Support me on Patreon and subscribe for books.